Hi, everybody. This is Stephanie A. Just in case we haven't met, I am the founder and executive director at Adoption and Beyond. And today we have a special treat. We have Monica and Brandon here who are going to talk to us about their adoption experience. So um, I just want to welcome you both today. And I'm just going to dive right into our questions, if that's good with you guys. Great. Sure. So can I tell us what brought you to adoption to begin with? I have PCOS um, and I knew that kind of younger on. Um, and when my husband and I were dating, you know, there were questions about, you know, obviously the normal things like, do you want to have kids and all of that? And so both of us were very passionate and on board with being parents. Um, but of course I kind of had to say like, I, I do think I have issues. I don't know how far it's going to go. Obviously, you know, I've never tried to have a child, but you know, would a, a adoption be something that you would think about, you know? Um, and so he has always said, yes. Mm -hmm. Um, fast forward, we got married. Um, we start trying to have children and, um, we, we do seek out fertility and we successfully got to try, um, a cycle. And then my appendix exploded and, um, I was very sick. Um, and I thought I was pregnant instead. And so me realizing that I would sacrifice my body for a child, you know, obviously I wanted to be a parent very bad, but if I'm not going to be there for that child, maybe that wasn't the right way to go about that at the time. And and so that was kind of my nudge. And my husband was just like, you know, we really need to look into adoption, you know? And so he kind of was the driver for that. And we kind of were searching for local places. We hadn't been married quite two years. So there were some cutoffs um, and hard stops um, that were kind of hard and challenging for us with certain ones. And so um, we found adoption and beyond and um, we set up um, like a interview and to, to learn about it and, you know, and it kind of sat on ourselves, but we, we talked about it, you know, a long time ago too. So that is why we chose adoption and beyond, you know, we were local at that time, you know, we, we live in the Kansas city area. So it was really easy, easy access. And then, you know, very responsive people, you know, we've worked with everybody. So um, that's why. And then, yeah. And then we decided to start our home study process. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're going to talk more about that after a while, but I want to just bring clarity for people when um, you're talking about some agencies have cutoffs um, in terms of how long you need to be married. And so some agencies are five years, three years, we happen to be one year. Um, although we do count the time that people have um, cohabitated with each other beforehand. We count that in that time. We just, uh, we think it's important to not just get married and then all of a sudden start learning to live together and <laughs> start the adoption nope. process. <laughs> yes. So, and, and we value those, but obviously we didn't yeah. fit into some that we right. were looking at. And so I think for me that like us, it, there are reasons why, you know, and right. you guys mm -hmm. just fit with us and then just everybody's personalities fit with ours too. So, yeah. Great. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about what your journey looked like starting out after you survived the home study process, then kind of what happened next? It's the wait, you know, it's those words, those two words in the adoption process, you know, and when you're in it and people are like, oh, you know, when you get your child, you'll know that the wait was worth it. And like, of course we very much do, you know, um, but it's hard telling somebody who is currently in the wait that it's going to happen and it's not hard. It's hard. Um, finding ways to be patient. Um, and, you know, the home study process is very, it makes you think about yourself a lot and what you want in your future. And I appreciated that, but, um, also then it's like, oh, we're so excited. We're getting things checked off. And then it's, we wait. And it's the unknown and a lot of things, the unknown is hard for a lot of people. So yeah. I don't know, I, I started, you know, documenting um, pictures of things that I crafted or books that I read. Um, you know, that's what I kind of did. I, I read on, you know, how to raise toddlers or, you know, what preschools were like to just try to be ready for something in the future, probably my anxiety, but, right. <laughs> but I documented pictures of every month things that I accomplished and it oh, was for nice. me. It's not for my child. Nice. You know, they're not going to yeah. care in the future, see but where you came from and, and how yeah. far you've come. In the it helps. 
Yeah. Good. <laughs> Good. That's I, I have I love that advice because I'm always asked all the time, how do you survive the weight? And and it's just so hard. Um, so you had some failed adoption. So t- talk to us a little bit about what that was like and what happened. And yeah. So, you know, obviously you know how adoption envy on mm-hmm. works. And, you know, I'm not sure. Um, I'm assuming it's similar, but if our profile was shown, um, we would get an email. Mm-hmm. And so at some point we were never getting emails. I felt like, and I was like, oh, this is hard. And then we would get an email or two and then we would, you know, wait. And then the call, you know, the, the call, our first one was kind of quick. We went, we met the family and we were going to pick up the child the next day. Feeling like you're ready, but then realizing that you're not ready, not that you're not ready, but you know, just like, oh, we really need a bassinet. We really now need diapers. We really now need clothes that are, we know the gender of, you know, things like that. And so preparing that time is exciting. It's overwhelming. And then getting a call from, from Adoption Beyond that you know, they decided to parent, you know, it's hard. Um, It's a little, it's devastating, but it's hard because it's a human life. And I worked in the NICU at the time. He's, we're both nurses, you know, I've seen a lot of family dynamics where I'm from. So I feel like I'm pretty accepting, but I can't admit that it wasn't hard. And I feel like he said that our first one was probably the hardest. The first, the first failed adoption, I think, was the hardest. Mm-hmm. We had two more after that that didn't work out. I think they weren't easy, but it was the sting of it wasn't as bad. The first one, you know, that day we even held that baby. We we're going to come back and um, pick that baby up the next day, and I guess the family decided against it overnight. So right. that we we um, the next day that was hard. Um, on just most particularly on the first one, I remember just because we were kind of wasn't we weren't ready for that. I don't think at the time. You now have your daughter, and <laughs> so so tell us what you feel about the Burr family, and what is your relationship like with them or with her, the mom? Um, our birth mom is Candace. I believe we we have a very good relationship with her. We see her four th- times four times a year is mm-hmm. what we started with. And we've kept that up. You know, our Layla's going to be uh, three years old now. So mm-hmm. I think it's worked very well, actually, for what we It changes, you know, and it depends on how long you've known them. Um, you know, I think birth family become family that you didn't know that you were expecting, you know, we value her. Mm-hmm. You know, he always says that we are so lucky. Um, you know, he's like, we could have worth, you know, which I'm like, she's wonderful. It's hard to, you know, imagine life without her, you know, because obviously we would not have Layla without her, you know, originally it was going to be a closed adoption. And I'm so glad that, you know, obviously we would go with whatever, you know, Candace chose, but we're happy that we get Mm -hmm. to see her and we get to be a part of her life and get to hear updates. And we're very big cheerleaders of her and we love her unconditionally, just like we love our daughter unconditionally. And yeah, she, she comes to our house, you know, cause yeah. people ask a lot of adoptive parents or do you feel comfortable with them coming to your house? And of course, you know, that's fine. And obviously we only met her at the beginning, but we've met some of her family members and, and she's actually, she came to Layla's Layla's birthday party, birthday party with our family. And so Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's for Layla. That's the driver for it, but Mm -hmm. she makes it easy. She makes it completely easy. She's wonderful. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That one was another last minute kind of adoption too. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. And so we were supposed to meet her the day that she went into labor. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was COVID the very beginning of it. Yes. So exactly. Very it was, it was, yes, the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So that made some interesting dynamics at the hospital and, and everything that was going on. What do you wish you knew before going into the adoption process that you know now? I, and I don't know if it was failed adoptions, infertility. And even when I was holding Layla and, you know, waiting for permanency hearing or, you know what I mean? Like that, that final, you know, sign on the dotted line. But I, I was angry a little bit when I saw my friends have babies and my thought came to mind was, well, at least they don't have to worry about their child's getting, you know, taken away and feeling that that, that is normal. It's a normal feeling and not feeling bad for feeling some of those feelings because it's not affecting anybody. You know, I didn't go and blatantly say, oh, 
your child's cute and you know, good luck, you know, you don't have to worry about them being taken away, but like just feeling what you feel and, right. and it's okay to have some negative feelings. You know, of right. course we, you know, loved our daughter and very happy that we had her, but mm-hmm. realizing sometimes the hard thing. And then I think another thing that is interesting is as with an open adoption, we realize that like some of our biggest fears are the same as Candace's, you know, I think the fear of, of rejection of yeah. Layla, both sides and right. talking through it. Yeah. And I think that's something for adoptive parents, because I don't know, I, I've seen it and heard it from other adoptive parents, you know, you're scared of rejection. And if, as you're, yeah, we are, one of our worries was if, if our child gets older as say a teenager and they um, have rejection of either us and right. want to seek out more of their birth parents. It's not that um, we have any more trouble with her spending time with Candace as much as she wants she can, but we just were scared that she would reject one side. And we had a meeting with Candace here, it had been last year, and it, she expressed she actually had the same fear as we did that she thought, you know, Layla may reject her someday. Mm-hmm. Um, and so no, neither one of us, no side wants that. Um, right. We realized right. that some of our fears were kind of the same, actually. That's fascinating. Yeah. And it's it's really nice that you guys could come to the table and have these conversations with each other now. And can you talk a little bit about your experience with adoption and beyond? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think every you guys are on, our, you know, our side, you know, but it's also important in an agency for me to, to care about the birth families, especially the mothers. Um, It's a hard time in somebody's life. It's traumatic. And if you're only going to care about us, you know, that's, it's hard for me, you know, that, that would be hard for me. And so I for sure wanted to know that there would be some, you know, good resources for them. And, you know, they don't have to take it, you know, but they're allowed. And just that was important to me. Um, You guys are a a smaller agency. And I don't mean that, you know, in a rude way, but like, you know, it it feels personal. Yeah. I mean, our class that we went to in person, you guys know, like, I feel like, you know, everybody and your, your wall, I bet you, you can name every kid on there because you (laughs) remember them. And so that was the piece for me is that it, it, these kids are wonderful. Um, and it's important to have an agency, you know, that, you know, we can go back on Layla only has a onesie size. So I'm ready for some t-shirts and (laughs) for her adoption and beyond merch, but you know, we can talk about that later, but thank you for the idea. I love that. Yes. Yes. (laughs) But you know, And then, you know, you really care about connecting afterwards too. And, you know, us coming back and saying, how can we help, you know, either adoptive families or, you know, you know, how can we help um, people going through it? Because it's hard, but it's, you know, everybody's journey is different. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. Kind of pay it forward too. So definitely. Um, And so, okay. So Talking about the training, um, what did you find out? Just for everybody to know that the training was in person, but because of, because of COVID, yep. it's now all online and we just, we moved it over uh, online to a course. The material is the same. So tell me what you found most informative about that education training. Do you remember anything that stood out to you? I mean, I liked meeting people that mm-hmm. you knew. I mean, and in communities that we know, you know, um, from, from towns, we, we know where they are, you know, and, you know, striving and, and thinking, okay, yes, that is something I want to do. Yeah. We had a, um, I remember one of the meetings we had met, we had a class where we had a guest speaker and she had come in and actually she had adopted out a child. And I, I hate to say, I don't remember her name, but I remember that was never seeing that side of a, of a person or that side of a story before, especially, you know, that we had just started our adoption process. Mm-hmm. That was very eye-opening, you know, just to see a different point of view. That's, that's mm-hmm. what I remember most actually. Is, is, so is learning about what the birth mother is going through. What, her, what she went through. Yeah. yeah. When she adopted. Mm-hmm. Her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember she was in college and um, that was the, it was the story. She came and talked to us for about 30 minutes. And that's what I remember the most. Yes. Yes. Great. What was the best part of your adoption process? I think the best part was probably at the end when we got our child. <laughs> so, <laughs> definitely. Uh, like I said, I think it was a positive experience. Like I said, there was some hardships along the way and things we learned, but overall it was a positive experience. Mm-hmm. I was um, the best part was was getting Layla at the end for okay. sure. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like 
I think even now is some of the best parts too, you know, um, knowing that there is struggle and pain and, you know, trauma for both sides and finally getting on the other side Mm -hmm. for us, you know, um, is, is wonderful and living what we saw our future to be feels good. You know, not that everybody gets you know, all of these fairy tale things, but it's, I feel like I'm in a fairy tale a lot, you know, but I know Layla, you know, is our daughter and just the affirmations and her words and she gets older, you know, obviously I don't have a teenager yet, but she does say, go mom, go away, mommy, leave me alone. And I can hear (laughs) it at 15, but like, I just, you know, all of that's amazing too. So I don't know. It's, it's all a good part. (laughs) Great. I love it. Um, so you survived the adoptive home study process. You touched on that briefly. Um, what did you want to share with others to help calm their nerves about the home study process? We had saws in our um, basement because we were finishing it because we were very nervous. So when the social worker at the time um, came over, we were like, um, so we would never let a child play with the saw ever. <laughs> or the nails that you see, or the, you know? Um, so there's that, um, you know, you don't have to, it does not have to be perfect. It can be, if that makes you feel better. Um, that, I mean, especially like somebody coming into your home. Um, but yeah. And then she led us through, I mean, I, I feel like we didn't really know what we were doing and, yeah. um, she <laughs> led us through the process. And, and so that was, it was, it was much easier than what I thought it was going to be really at the end of it, but <laughs> great. We're not looking for reasons not to approve you. We're here to no. help you get through these hoops. <laughs> exactly. So what are some words of advice and encouragement do you have for hopeful adoptive families starting or in the waiting adoption journey? I would, I would tell them if that's what they truly want to go for it. Obviously Mm -hmm. there's lots of research to be had. And I I still think it's better to use an agency than I know you can adopt a child on your own. And they said how difficult that would be all the legal processes and stuff. But I think the first step would be to talk to an agency and then go for it. That's what you really want Mm -hmm. and say, you know, mayor, um, it just, it worked out so well for us. It's, we can't imagine our lives. I can't imagine anything without, without Layla in it, you know? Mm-hmm. And so yeah. that would be the best thing I would tell them to go for it. And is there anything else you'd like to say to end us out? Thank you to Adoption Beyond. We, oh. we wouldn't have, have our lives the way that we have it now without you guys. So we appreciate everything you've done and continue to do for the adoption community, um, both adoptive parents um, and uh, birth families. So we appreciate it. You're welcome. We love everybody we work with and we just, we love it too. So, well, thank you. Those are such kind words to say. (laughs) So, well, I just want to uh, thank, uh, thank you again for being interviewed and I appreciate it so much. And I just think this is just so helpful for families to hear families who are on the other side of the journey and, and that there, there is an end. It's not if it's when, and it's there for you. Yeah. Like you said, you want to go for it, go for it. (laughs) 